the blessings of pleasing the Lord. Like so many of the Proverbs, verse 7, this is a general rule, a general rule. But it does have exceptions. A righteous life disarms opposition. Or as Barnes put it, he said, goodness has power to charm and to win even enemies to itself. That's true. These things are true as a general rule. Goodness is transformative. Edwin McMaster's Stanton treated Abraham Lincoln with utter contempt. He called him a low, cunning clown. And, and this is a direct quote, the original gorilla. He said there was no need to go to Africa to capture a gorilla when one was available in Springfield, Illinois. This is what Stanton said about Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln never retaliated. Instead, Lincoln made Stanton his war minister, believing that he was the best qualified man for the office. Years later, when Lincoln was killed by an assassin's bullet, Stanton looked down on Lincoln's rugged face and said tearfully, there lies the greatest ruler of men the world has ever seen. Lincoln's life was transformative. He caused his enemies to be at peace with him. Also concerning our text, someone said this, said the true disciple is a peacemaker. As Jesus taught his followers to be. You know, we've been studying that. Matthew 5 and 9, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called, they shall be recognized as children of God. That is, those of us who have received God's peace as a, result of our, as a result of our vertical relationship with the Lord, with Christ, now we spread God's peace with whom, to those with whom we have a horizontal relationship. We want people to know the peace and love that we have as a result of what Jesus has done in our lives. This causes some of our enemies to be at peace with us, but not all of them. One of the most interesting things, and I want you to hear this, about our text is, and there's discussion, Elder Miller, in the theological community, there's debate as to who the he is, in the B clause of Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 7. It says, he maketh his enemies to be at peace with him. He maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Now the Hebrew is ambiguous as to whether the he is referencing the man whose ways please the Lord, or God himself, who transforms the enemies. Isn't that interesting? Some say that the man whose ways please the Lord, because he wants to please God so, he goes out of his way to make peace with his enemies. The popular application is that God is the one who transforms the enemies. Now what is agreed upon 
whether you think the he is the man or God, the common uh, agreement is that this particular proverb cannot be pressed into universal applications. That is, our enemies are not always at peace with us all the time. Whether we please God or not, you can't automatically assume by this text that if I just do right, there will always be peace between me and my enemies. Well, why can't you? Well, one reason you can't is that 2 Timothy 3 and 12 says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And even the eighth beatitude that we've been talking about, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and shall persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you for my sake. It says rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Uh, that's um, right here in the, in the beatitudes as we have been studying. And what it literally says is blessed are ye when men shall revile you. That is, the when there is whenever men shall revile you. That is, the persecution is not constant. We go through as believers, but none of us are under constant persecution. But what Jesus was talking about was the occasional outbursts of persecutions that are sure to arise against the active peacemaker. If you go about doing the Lord's work and doing the Lord's will, you will encounter persecution because those of us who are following God, we go counter to the accepted philosophy of the world. The church is a counterculture to the world. This is why our, our legends, our, our singers, the saints, got to be careful who we sing with. You can't be sanctified and singing with Snoop Dogg or any of the rest of them, see, because we are called to be counter. You don't hear me. Counter. We, we counter the culture. We go against the philosophy of the world. The culture in which we live in today endorses same-sex marriage. We'll counter that. The culture that we live in today uh, has legalized the murder of the unborn. They can make same-sex marriage legal. They can make abortion legal, but they can't make it right. Amen. We're in a culture today that celebrates transgenderism. And we celebrate uh, uh, wicked behavior. You don't hear me. You know, the NFL just, just couldn't, we just couldn't have Tim Tebow taking a knee. We just, God bless the Smiths. Man, back from their honeymoon. <laughs> that says it all. That's my man. And that big grin on her face says it too. <laughs> Ain't God all right. <laughs> but, uh, oh, Tim. It was a problem for Tebow to take a knee. We don't want religion in football. There's no place for prayer. That's what they said. In football. All right. Well, when they rejected Tebow, they got Michael Sam, a man who married who uh, homosexual with a man. 
Yeah, he did. Uh, it was a disgrace. Got a call from the White House. And the only thing that made the man even interesting, it was not what he did, it was who he did. Now, they have a real kneeling problem. That they, see, when you sow to the wind, you reap the whirlwind. Now they don't know what to do. Because since Tim couldn't yield in the name of Jesus, the Lord said, all right, I'll, I'll show you something about yielding. About kneeling. He couldn't kneel in Jesus' name. Now look at what's going on. Oh, the things that are happening in this culture. The saints are to go counter to the culture and the philosophy of this world because the world is wrong. We've been talking about this. We're told to love not the world. You can't love the world and God. Hallelujah. It's just like, you know, it's like those who try to believe that Jesus Christ was a good man a good preacher, a good teacher, but not God the Son. You can't believe that because you know who don't allow that? Jesus does it. With Jesus, you got to either believe he is who he said he is or you got to believe that he was a fool. Uh, uh, you got to believe that he was an imposter. You either believe that he's the son of the living God, that he's the word made flesh, that he's the soon coming king. That he's the only potentate. Or he's a fool. Biblical Christianity doesn't allow to believe anything else. Either one extreme or the other. Biblical Christianity makes no room for... Uh, participating in it and embracing it and loving it and then trying to mix a little Islam with it, a little Buddhism with it, a little Masonic with it. No, Jesus calls us out. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh to the Father but by me. And the Lord said, no man can serve two masters. You either will hate the one and love the other or cling to the one and despise the other, but you can't serve God and mammon. You can't have the Lord and the world. Amen. The persecution comes from our enemies. I said Thursday night that the moment you name the name of Christ, all of Christ's enemies become your enemies. The moment we identify with Jesus, then the enemies of Christ, uh, we automatically get in their crosshairs and they aim their guns at us. Praise the Lord. So persecution comes from his enemies. So one can conclude that living holy, spoken of Proverbs from Proverbs 16 and 7, when a man's ways please the Lord, and living godly from 2 Timothy 3 and 12, that says, All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Proverbs 16 and 17, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. When you put these two passages together, it shows us that living holy will both stir up and stir down our enemies. It depends on where we are. Praise the Lord. When you have that right relationship with the Lord, it will cause people to both love you and respect you. It depends on who they are. Amen. 
There, there are times often those who are in right relationship with God are respected. Genesis 26 and 28, and they said, we saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. And we said, let there be now an oath betwixt us, even betwixt us and thee, and let us make a covenant with thee. Now these were the words of the emissaries from Abimelech who hated Isaac. But when they saw the hand of God on Isaac, they said, let's make a covenant. They respected God's anointing that was on him. Second Chronicles 17 and 10 says, And the fear of the Lord fell upon all the kingdoms of the land that were round about Judah, so that they made no war against Jehoshaphat. Because God's hand was on Judah, God's hand was on Jehoshaphat, the enemies refused to fight when the Lord got through. Amen. And lastly, Luke 2 and 52 says, This of our Lord, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. When you live right, people will respect the holiness that's in you. People will respect the hand of God on your life. Amen. Both happens when a man's ways please the Lord. You will be admired by some, hear me today, and hated by others. Amen. Jesus said this on the other hand concerning, uh, the Bible says this concerning uh, those who will hate us for living holy. The Bible speaks in 2 Timothy 3 and 3, the last clause, it speaks of despisers of those that are good. There are people who will despise you because they see Christ in you. And well, what can I do about that? Nothing. Just keep living holy and, and turn them over to the Lord. And we've already said in Matthew 5 and 11 that men will revile you. Men will humiliate you. People will say harsh things against you falsely for Christ's sake. See, it depends on where people are. Amen. I said the other day, your holiness convicts the sinner. So on your job, when they treat you funny, don't get all bent out of shape. Amen. Don't, don't, don't pull back on God. That means the Holy Ghost is working. Thank God that people see Christ in you. I, took, I was somewhere the other day, and I walked in a room, and a person was very, 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 very uh, cold toward me. And uh, others who were in the room spoke, and they were very nice. But this one person wouldn't speak to say, didn't want to say anything, just mean. And uh, I, I said, well, maybe uh, she heard my preaching. And so, uh, and, uh, and, and didn't want to get delivered. And, 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 and after uh, I, I, I left and uh, I was going somewhere and saw the person again, but the individual didn't see me. And when I saw the lifestyle that the person was living, then I understood why they went so cold when the man of God walked into the room. Just, see, when you walk in, the kingdom walks in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our school students, when you walk on campus, the kingdom walks on campus. And depending upon where a person is spiritually, they'll either be glad to see you or they will resent your presence. This is the effect that the believer has. See, one thing about the, the believer, everybody responds to the believer. People respond to the Christian one way or the other. They're, if, they're, if they're in the right place or if, they're, if their heart is soft, they're glad to see you because perhaps that day uh, you can lead them to Christ or if they're saved already, they're really glad because there's another brother or sister in the Lord. But if they have a hard heart, and they resist the things of God. Well, you walk in representing everything they're upset with. You walk in representing the God who is bringing conviction to them. And all of a sudden, you get a cold shoulder or you get treated funny all because uh, they see Christ in you. 
Isn't it amazing how the world responds to us? Don't you let nobody fool you. You matter. Amen. Don't let anybody trick you. God's hand is on you and people see you. Whether you're at the, uh, the convenience store, the drug store, praise the Lord, you know, like Walgreens or somewhere, that kind of drug store. <laughs> Thought I'd make that clear. Um, wherever you may be, people uh, see the same. Amen. Matthew Henry said, uh, uh, and, and most lean toward the, the fact that the second clause represents God. That he is God. Henry says, God can turn foes into friends when he is pleased. He who has all hearts in his hands can make a man's enemies live at peace with him. He made Esau live at peace with Jacob. He made Abimelech live at peace with Isaac. God who can do these things most certainly can make your enemies live at peace with you. Various biblical translations renders it uh, this way. They render it as the he referencing God himself. Says Jehovah delights in one's ways. Says when Jehovah delights in one way, one's ways, he causes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Another translation says when the Lord is pleased, with a man's ways. He makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Forgive my redundancy, but another passage says, uh, when the ways of a man please the eternal, he make even his foes friends with him. Lives live as the Lord would, would have thee to live, and he will make even thine enemies into well-wishers. Isn't that something? Yet on the other hand, Romans 12 and 18 says, If it be possible, as much as lieth within you, live peaceably with all men. That is because a man wants to please God so much, he does all that he can to make peace between himself and his enemies. I believe that the answer to the dilemma lies in the contextual setting of the scripture. I'm a big believer that context is everything. It's not just a word, but it's how it's used. The context of a thing determines the meaning of a thing. And when you look at uh, Proverbs chapter 16, it shows that God has the last say. Verse 1 says the preparations of the heart are in man. That is, people reflect. Preparations is literally reflections. People plan things. People arrange things. Praise the Lord. People plan things and, and uh, plan their lives, plan their college, plan for retirement, plan to go on vacation, plan, plan. We are planners. Wise people are planners. Amen. If you're doing good today and uh, uh, in your life, I, I, would I would venture to say, I would, uh, if I was a bed man, I would bet you, you're where you are because you plan to be where you are. Amen. If you're retired and you're doing good and you have a nice fat retirement check coming in, that's because you planned on it. And if you do not have it, it's probably because you didn't plan on it. People are planners. You have to plan. If you want a good job, you got to plan on getting one by going to school, making the grade. Amen. Amen. Got to, got to plan. Life requires planning. There's a strategicness to life. But despite our planning, God has the last say. It still takes God to bring the God of the Bible, that is, to bring our plans to pass. So you can have everything lined up and a condition can come out of left field that you didn't plan on. 
And the next thing you know, you're in bankruptcy because you didn't see it coming. Most people who end up in bankruptcy, many is because of illness. They didn't see the condition coming. You, we, can, we plan on things. Most people who get married plan to stay married. I like to think that you do. Praise the Lord. Uh, and, uh, and, and with God's help, you're able to do it. Men plan, but the God of the Bible has the last say. Somebody shout amen. amen. This is why in your planning, you have to put God in it. That's why with everything, you have to put at the end of it, if it be thy will. There's a little joke that says, you want to make God laugh? Then just go to him with, with your plans. Just, just show up and say, I planned this, that, and the other. The Lord says, you better ask me. Praise the Lord, because I, 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 did, I control whether or not you live another day. I control whether or not you breathe your next breath. You have to put God, the God of the Bible, in your plans. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm planning for my children uh, to be somebody special. You better pray over them. After you finish planning, you better pray. Because you can plan, but something can come up that will thwart your plans. Could be that the devil has put a seed in their mind. That doesn't even, doesn't even appear yet. They can it grow up in them and, and become something that you couldn't see. But if you've been a praying mama or a praying father, then your prayers will address whatever that thing is. My, 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 my. It takes the Lord. Amen. To keep us. You, you ought not to leave your house in the morning without asking God for protection. Oh, I know the way the work, yeah, but you don't know what may happen on the way. So you got to seek the Lord. If God doesn't do it, it won't be done. And you are where you are because the Lord allowed it. Oh, well, I was the toughest, toughest man in the streets. You weren't tougher than a bullet. You weren't tougher than a knife. You made it because the Lord willed it so. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody ought to thank him. He looked out for us and brought us to where we are right now. People can plan, but it takes the Lord to endorse those plans and to bless those plans. Verse 2, so that means God has the last say. Verse 2 says, all the ways of a man are right in his own eyes. But the Lord weighs the spirits. Are you praying for me? <laughs> to evaluate something is to compare it uh, to or with a standard. If a man's standards is that of his own, then all of his ways are all right with him because he has employed an artificial standard. To me, I'm all right. To me, I'm right. I'm fine. I am the best. Yes, I, I'm the best at what I do. I'm the best business person. I'm a good person. Praise the Lord. I'm a fine person. Why am I such a fine individual? Why am I such a with it cool guy that everybody ought to love, everybody ought to like. You know why? Because I have employed an artificial standard. I judge me by my own standards. And the Bible says when you judge yourself by your own standards, everything you do is all right. Praise God. Word clean that comes from a Hebrew word that's related to another Hebrew word that speaks to uh, olive oil, frankincense, perfumes. In other words, all of your ways smells good to you when you apply them to your own standard. But God judges the heart and God comes in to see whose standard you have employed. Have you employed your own or have you employed the scripture? And, and, and see, so when, when we apply God's standard, we, now God's standard is true. And the Lord's standard may, may change, make us change our opinion of ourselves. Many people leave a church 
before they would sit under God's holy standards. Many people will walk or turn their back on you before they sit and hear God's holy standards because God's standards will check you. You can shack up and be happy until God's standards are applied. Oh yeah, you can smoke, drink, lie, cuss, steal, talk about people, do anything you want, and be all right until God's standards are applied. You can be jealous, envious, uh, walk in jealousy, envy, strife, murder, debate, whatever, be mean to folk, talk down to people, and do everything, and it's still on them. The problem is that they don't understand you until God's standards are applied. You can miss church without conviction, not pay tithe, not give an offering, praise the Lord, and feel and don't and not feel bad as long as you're employing your own standards. Your own standards will let you stay home on Sunday morning and and, and, and watch the football game and catch all and, and with, hey with, with no conviction and call yourself saved, call yourself the man of the house. Amen. And uh, the, the, the wife got to pray, asking God, the Lord touch him uh, so he won't stop me from going to church because I can't even hope that he'll attend with me. That, that's a thing of the past. When he's applying his own standard, but if he applies God's standard, God's standard will get you out of that bed. God's standards will make you ashamed that you're sitting there waiting for the game to start at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning. God's standard. See, when I apply my standard, I score 100 every time. When I apply God's standard, hey, I need help. <laughs> I need deliverance. You'll, be, you'll make a better wife if you apply God's standard. You'll make a better husband if you apply God's standards. You'll make a good worker if you apply God's standards. We'll make, we'll make better friends if we apply God's standards. So the Lord says all the ways of a man are right in his own eyes. But I try the spirits. I test the motives. In other words, he said, I'm the one who determines whether or not the ways are ultimately clean or not. You may say they're clean. But unless they're clean according to my word, they're not clean. The president can't make them clean. Congress can't make them clean. The Senate can't make them clean. The Republican Party, the Democrat Party can't make them clean. It's God's standard that you got to live by. Oh, can I get the, can I get the help in here? So then we see in verse 2, the Lord still has the last say. And then I heard him say, commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. Commit thy works, your works. Commit thy works, your works. Your works are your ways, your chosen tasks, your efforts, your achievements, your goals, the things you want to be in life. Commit them to the Lord. To, to commit is to roll them over unto the Lord. That is to seek God's approval. Make sure your plans are pleasing to him. And while you work your plan, don't be dishonest. Be an honest businessman. Don't be a dishonest business person. Be honest. And then while you're being honest, be humble. Praise the Lord. And, and, and don't ever step across your, don't double cross your religion. Don't double cross God to make a dollar. Amen. Don't, don't, don't become underhanded. That's, see, this is how you commit your ways to the Lord. I would love to preach to the NFL players, all of them that, who claim to be saved. Amen. Do, do good in the league. All professional athletes, I wish I could preach to them. I tell them to do good in the league, but go as high as holiness will let you. Don't become a punk. Don't become a sissy. Don't start cussing and swearing. Don't start doing cigarette commercials and liquor commercials. Don't, don't start doing things that you know you know better than because they're waving a dollar at you or a million dollars or two million or whatever the case may be. You, you rise up as far as holiness will take you. And then when you hit that holiness wall, be satisfied. No, oh, I didn't get that commercial because I wouldn't. There are certain things that I wouldn't say. 
certain things that I wouldn't do. They, they wouldn't use me for this, that, or the other because I told them I don't smoke and I won't promote cigarettes. I don't drink and I won't be in a beer commercial. I don't do those things, so I'm not going to act those things out. Now I'll let God handle my career. I tell you the Lord is a career handler. Amen. I know firsthand most people who get promoted in churches, amen, they're first, second, third, fourth generation this and that. Mama's supervisor, daddy's a bishop, this one's that, that one the other. But I tell you, sometimes God takes misfits like me. God takes people who didn't have any of those things going for them. I said, I'm going, to wear, I'm going to raise you up anyway. Why? Not because you are special, but because I'm special. Because God is special. He says, I want to show the world that I am the Lord. And, and all you got to do is trust me, and I will make a way. Oh, if you, if you roll, if you commit your task, your goals, the things you want to be unto the Lord, guess what God will do? God will establish it. He will make it happen. Somebody shout, God will make it happen. Amen. Do you want it to happen? Do you want it to come to pass? Then trust the Lord. Be satisfied to move at the Lord's pace. Be satisfied, amen, to, to, to prosper as much as honesty will let you prosper. As much as rightness will let you prosper. Go as far as decency will let you go. And then if there's something beyond that, you just wave it goodbye. And say, if, if, the, Lord, if the Lord has it for me, God will make a way. And, if, and then if you don't, I'm satisfied with what he's done. Because he has established my going. So even here, and when it comes down to getting ahead in life, the Lord has the last say. Let's see, he has the last say with the preparations. Last say in noticing the motives of the heart. Last say in uh, whether or not, praise the Lord, your works will be established. Then I heard him say, the Lord have made all things for himself. Where verse 2 just comes out and speaks to the sovereignty of God. Everything belongs to God. <laughs> praise the Lord, including our goals and objectives. Everything in life receives its appropriate retribution. God says in verse 4, uh, it says, The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked, that is the immoral, for the day of evil. In other words, every action receives an appropriate retribution. God, in God's, uh, in God's order, praise the Lord, every act includes its answer and its own consequence. So then you need to know that the God of the Bible is above everything. Nothing is beyond him. And he says, uh, if you choose to listen to him, you'll be blessed. But if you go the way of the immoral, God says there is a day. You may get away with it for a minute. Don't let the people on television fool you. If, if, if entertainment tonight is about to make you backslide, stop watching it. I find it to be the most interesting show to watch because it proves the Bible. Famous people killing themselves. Famous people, rich and famous, and can't stay married. Rich and famous and on drugs. Rich and famous and having to resort to all these things. And here we are down here just regular folks sanctified. And we got the joy of the Lord and don't need any kind of artificial stimulation. Our God, he, he has a yacht. Praise the Lord. And you don't even have a bathtub. And in, and for, in order for him to enjoy his yacht, He's got to get high. And there you go, standing there in your shower, thanking Jesus for being good to you. Can I get a witness? My, 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 my. Do I have any happy folk in here? Bring me up just a little bit, brother. I feel like preaching. Is there any happy folk in here who are glad for where God has brought you? Praise the Lord. He drive, rides around his chauffeur-driven, expensive car. And uh, he's got to drink in the car. Need to smoke in the car. Pick up three prostitutes on the way home. Got to do all that. And you're sitting there waiting for the cat bus. Just as happy as can be. Sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? Because everything belongs to God. 
And isn't it good to know that he don't have to, long before the Lord blesses you with the things of this life, that he gives you joy first. I'm glad that I got my joy before I got my car. Because if I would have gotten the car before I got the joy, I would have thought that the joy was because of the car. But God gave me the joy of the Lord when I was walking. I'm glad that I got my joy before God gave me a suit. Because had I got the suit first, I would have thought that the joy was in the suit. But I found out that the joy is in Jesus. Oh, I'm glad that he gave me joy before he gave me a house. For had I got the house first, I would have thought that the joy was in the house. But I found out that the joy is in Jesus. Do I have anybody in here today who got the joy before you got the things? And you know that the joy is in Jesus and not in the things. Well, why don't you praise the joy giver? Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You ought to look at that person next to you and just tell them, you may have more money than me, and you may not, but I guarantee you this, I have joy. Yeah! Ah, I've got joy! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I've got it on the inside because my God is sovereign. He rules and he super rules. And whatever go on, I've been made for him. And not only is he sovereign, and thank God that means that he rules the world and he has the last say. And every, every action has its own consequence. So don't you let the evil, don't you let the immoral, don't you let them cause you to become envious of them because they're going down. I hear the old church mothers now. Everything is going down, but the word of God. Everything's going down, but the word of God. You know, Burt Reynolds just died. Aretha just died. I hope they were right. I hope they were saved. I hope they got saved before they left here, because if they didn't, Oh, they're screaming now. They got the short end of the stick. But look at you today, standing there sanctified, knowing in your heart that if you don't wake up in the morning, everything will still be all right because Jesus is on the inside. You've been washed and you've been cleansed. You've been washed and you've been cleansed. Yeah! Yes, Lord. Good God Almighty, I heard David say, truly God is good to Israel and to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well not slipped, for I was envious against the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, the world, got into my head hallelujah I almost gave up verse 17 says until I went into the sanctuary of God then understood I therein surely thou didst set them in slippery places but I heard I heard Habakkuk say that God wouldn't put him in slippery places, but that God was make his, would make his feet like hinds feet. How many know that we serve a God that'll make you sure-footed? You won't be sliding and stumbling and falling, but he'll give you a solid foundation. Somebody say yeah. yes. Yes! Yes, Lord. You ought to wave both hands and say, I can make it now. I can make it now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Time for me to close this. But he said here, he says now, the wicked, the proud is an abomination 
said the proud is an abomination before the Lord. In verse 5, the, the arrogant, they're an abomination. Though hand, join hands. He said, though they join forces, they shall not be unpunished. They can join forces, but there's no alliance that's stronger than God. They can do what they want to do. Hallelujah. They can be a deep state, uh, a shallow state, or no state at all. The God of the Bible has the last say. Don't walk in pride. What is that pride? Pride is that voice. It's that inner voice that whispers, my way is best. It's that inner voice that whispers, you don't need the scriptures. It's that inner voice that whispers, you don't need to listen to God because my way is best. That's the spirit of pride. You ought to rebuke it. And sometimes pride folk, they join hands and they, and, and they think they can form an alliance against God. But he says they will surely be punished. All right, he has the last say dealing with the pride. He has the last say when he, he, he's, he's sovereign over everything. He has the last say if we commit our works to him. He has the last say in judging our hearts and he has the last say with the preparations of man now look at it it says by mercy and by truth all a man's ways say iniquity is purged that is God's truth God's mercy purges us from iniquity he cleans us up good God almighty and the fear of the Lord makes you depart from evil when you trust God you don't have to take a shortcut when you trust the Lord you don't have to do underhanded stuff as a matter of fact trusting God reverencing God makes us escape from misfortune and calamity I want to say to everybody in here live holy live right don't worry about the storm that's out there. Don't worry about what may happen. God's got your back. God's got your front. He's your rear guard. The, 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 the sun will not smite me that thee by day, nor the moon by night. He will keep you. He will hold you up. All you got to do is lean on God's mercy and lean on God's truth. Well, if... The fear of the Lord keeps us from misfortune. If God's mercy and truth keeps us and cleanses us and makes us right, if God's truth sets us free, if he has the last say in dealing with the arrogant, the last say in all of these other categories, well, when a man's ways please the Lord, I think it makes sense for it to be the Lord, that God is the one that makes his enemies to be at peace with him. What is the scripture saying? It's teaching us that when you're going through and the devil is trying to stop you, don't be afraid because the Lord knows how much you can take and the Lord knows when to step in and make things all right. He knows when to bring the sun out. He knows when to call off the dogs. He knows when to tell the enemy to stand down. He knows when, hallelujah, you've had enough. So if you're going through and the devil is on your back, that's just a sign that you're able to make it. You're able to take it because when the load gets too heavy, God will step in. The Lord will step in and make even your enemies to be at peace with you. He's able to make your enemies your footstool. Somebody here ought to praise the Lord because you're stronger than you know you are. If you've been praying, saying, God, where are you? If you've been praying, saying, Lord, come and help me. And the Lord hadn't moved. The Lord is saying, 
you can hold out a little while longer. The Lord is saying, you can take it a little while longer. The Lord sees where you are, and the Lord, he knows when to step in. He knows when to bring the sun out. Oh, oh, the Lord. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Praise him right now. Let him manage. Let him manage your life. Let him manage your career. Go to throw up both hands and say whatever. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I want to close, I want to tell somebody in the words of a song, they sang the song that said you can, you can make it, you can, you can make it. I don't care what's going wrong, the Lord won't let it last too long you're not in this thing alone you can make it you can make it yes sir you want to tell your neighbor oh neighbor you can make it i don't care what's going wrong You're not in this thing alone. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can make it. Somebody ought to join her in dancing in the devil's face. one thing having said God bless you sister Debbie I love you girl having said all I said what is the whole point of it the point of it is all you got to do is make sure your ways please the Lord yeah See the devil, the devil, the devil wants you to want you to employ things that God's not pleased with. All you got to do is just please the Lord. All you got to do is just live holy. All you got to do is hold on to God's unchanging hand. All you got to do is trust the Lord. He will make everything all right. Jesus, yeah, somebody will cry, I'm just waiting on the Lord. When you wait on him, that means you do what he tells you. You live like he told you. You do what he tells you, 
You do what he's told you? Why are you waiting for him to come through? You can't stick out your lip. You can't pout your way into a blessing. You can't fold your arms into a miracle. I'm not going to praise him until he heal me. You are die sick. But if you will, while you're going through, unfold your arms. Get up out of that chair. Lift up your voice and give God glory. Yeah. He will, the Lord will, he'll make a way when the time comes. I've seen it so many times. I've seen it so many times. All of a sudden, they just start speaking. You shock yourself. Well, good morning. You saying that to me? I've said good morning to you 50 times and you wouldn't say a word. All of a sudden this time you walk in the store. Well, how are you today? You're stunned. At first you don't even speak or you think they're talking to somebody else. But then you look around, ain't nobody in the store but you and them. What has God done? He's worked on your enemy and made them your friend. Won't he turn it around? Won't he do it? If you've experienced it, let me hear you praise the Lord. Hey, hey. Oh, upper room, I can't hear you. Let me hear you praise. All I got to do is concentrate on allowing my ways, my journey, how I do, how I handle me. Make sure my ways please the Lord. Don't get distracted trying to fix everything else. Just let your ways please the Lord. If you please the Lord. See, the, 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 you have to know how the Bible is constructed. See, it goes to the extreme. He says, he maketh even his enemies. See, even, see, even, even. See, that's the extreme. Even, see, the, the, the far reaches. Now that's, that's not even say what he calls your friends to do for you. Or your spouse. Or your parents. Or your acquaintances. Or your buddies. Now I go all the way out. That enemy wrapped up in the Confederate flag. I will touch him. And make even your enemies to be at peace with you. Oh God. That's a divine intervention. Now, it's not saying he'll make your enemies be at peace with you every time, always, and from now on. You know why he won't do that? That's not good for us. So you need your enemies. You need all. We grow in the rain. Lord, teach me the secret that the little flowers know that if it never ever rains, then we'll never ever grow. No resistance, the muscles waste. They atrophy, they get smaller, amen. They get smaller and, and as, they, as they decrease in size, what fills in that size is fat. See, amen, that's the way that works. Say, well, I, I just, I, I got lazy. I just quit working out. Okay, well, what's going to happen is you, 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 your index uh, 
is going to change. You may still be able to wear the same clothes, but as the muscle decrease, what fills that space in is fat. It's an exchange. See, one eliminates the other. Somebody going to the gym after service. One eliminates the other. Oh, I, I know about these things. One, am I right about that? One eliminates the other. Fat burns muscle. That's right, sir. Hallelujah. All day long. All we got to do is apply God's law. Serve the Lord. Please him. Please him. That's the key. Please him. Everybody just shout, please him. I want to please him. I want to please him. Now, I want to please him. Praise the Lord. This is this is the third time today, because I, I, I didn't, I've been preaching. I've been intentionally not asking y'all to talk to your neighbors because we got to end that. Because some people get crazy with it. But I want you to tell your neighbor, I'm going to please him if it costs me you. Because it may. In order, in order to be able to please him. I might have to walk away from this job. Keeps me out of church. Puts me in the wrong place. In order to please him. Because nothing else can make my enemies be at peace with me. But pleasing him. <laughs> I want to pray for somebody who wants the Lord to intervene. The devil been working on you and trying to, oh, make you feel overwhelmed. But today, you can make it. Come to the altar. I don't care what's going on. The Lord won't let it last too long. You're not in this thing alone. You can make, make it. 